onto the family homes that were built on a watercourse and, well, they've slipped down the hill. No one's taking responsibility and, in fact, the owners have been told they have to fix them. It's not only heartbreaking, it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Enough words to describe how we're feeling right now. Oh, it's devastating. It's not in the back of your mind that something like this is going to happen. In modern Australia, how could this ever happen? This is what Jason and Amber Lyle's infinity pool used to look like, a paradise for their young kids since they built the home two years ago. And this is how it looks now. The deck is collapsing down the side of a hill, the pool is drained, the entire backyard deemed unstable. It's hard to find words that the feeling when you walk into a house that you, you sort of put your, your, your life into and you see the, the result of what's happened um, in, the, in the backyard and, and to the neighbours as well, it's, it's devastating. Their neighbours' houses are even worse. Next door, the back end of the home has snapped off, buckling concrete paths like an earthquake has hit. It all started after a torrential downpour back in March, but the damage has steadily become worse. Oh, there's just so much emotion and we put so much into this, designing it ourselves. This was our, our dream home, our dream yard. The land is slowly slipping downhill and ending up in the backyards of those below, causing further damage to their homes. All up, eight properties have been impacted some of them deemed unsafe to even step inside, like Tony and Nolene Hastings' home. How does it make you feel seeing the extent of the damage there currently? Well, devastating actually, because this was going to be our retirement home. This picture shows the extent of land slippage the day after the rain. Two weeks later, it fell away further before eventually looking like this. Their whole deck is now sliding down the hill with the earth disappearing from beneath the foundations. We're just so frustrated. I mean, I can speak about it now, but a few weeks ago I couldn't. I couldn't work for five weeks because I didn't know, I, I don't know how to feel because it's our home, but we're living in someone else's home. Stockland is the developer which created this new estate at Maudsland on Queensland's Gold Coast. It has provided some affected residents with $550 per week to pay for a rental property elsewhere. Jason and Amber's three young kids are now in an apartment and desperate to return home. They say every day, we want to come home, can we go see the house and where's our pool, where's our dogs? Yeah, it's just completely changed our whole life. Our whole world. While residents wait to see what the developer is going to do to fix this mess, they also want to know why authorities ever allowed a housing estate to be built in such a precarious position. I was completely horrified. Mark Boothman is their state MP. He's been trying to help residents wade through the complex problem of who's responsible. It's since been discovered the blocks where the landslip happened were built on top of a watercourse leading down to a small dam. You need to pretend the rights of those individuals, these mums and dads, because they don't know anything about this. They don't know the history of the area. They can all be covered up. How do we not already have protection in place for that currently? Well, that's the million dollar question. And that million dollar question is the question that those residents want answered. How could this happen in modern Australia? Residents have obtained a geotechnical report from 2014 highlighting concerns with the land. Instability was evident at several locations, as well as active slips associated with groundwater seepage. Jason Lyle's block, lot 622, one of three given a very high hazard risk rating. How did you feel when you saw that geotechnical report from 2014? I was furious. We bought on a Stockland block thinking they're a reputable company, they're an ASX listed company, um, they'll do things the right way. A spokesperson for Stockland said in a statement, The findings in these reports are not unusual and are aligned with the geography in many new communities. They are important in informing the right engineering response on the site, which will be part of our broader investigation. State Planning Minister Stephen Miles isn't getting involved in the complex issue directing homeowners to Gold Coast City Council. 
that's just not acceptable. The, the fact that uh, one of the one of the parties has played a part in in this situation um, is now the contact point for residents is is not good enough. A Gold Coast City Council spokesperson failed to answer our questions regarding risk mitigation steps taken only confirming that homeowners have been issued enforcement notices to rectify their now unsafe properties. Fixing the issue is likely to take at least a year. Affected residents want compensation so they can find a new home. We really doubt whether uh, a fight with, with nature and water can really be won in this location. The negotiations are going too slow. They want out. They just want some closure. They want to move on with their lives. What do you hope Stockland can do now to fix this? I just want them to live their values and be accountable. Stockland also told us it acknowledges how difficult the situation is for affected residents and remains committed to their safety and well-being. Well, thoughts and prayers are nice, but you can't live in them, can you? That full statement's on our homepage.